Uh, hi. Uh, we're going to do commentary for the West Coast U.S. Nationals. I'm Steven. I'm Alex. Uh, so this was a super fun tournament on September 23rd. Um, we did not feel... We weren't sure how good it was going to be, and we're going to do it. But we recorded uh, one table, and we're going to do commentary. Yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, this is my first time commentating. I've done it a couple times for the Game of Thrones card game. I don't think I've actually done it for Netrunner. Nice. Well, no crew. I would rather be commentating than our hometown folks. Yes, we are both LA based. Um, and then on the left, we have Jammin on uh, Personal Evolution. Um, he is an old school Netrunner player and really most famous probably as a judge. Um, I think he judged several worlds like way back one day. Uh, and you can see he's got a 2013 regionals map he's playing on. Oh, that's what I was playing on as well. I really wanted to get my 2013 2023 combo. It didn't happen. I was not playing in 2013. I played original Netrunner in like 2008. Nine ish, and then I think I picked up FFG Netrunner in like 2015. And then we did go back to ONR that one time at Strategic Con. That, that was super fun. Yeah, we did an ONR draft. <laughs> All right, so you can see here Jammin is playing Jackson Howard as Spin Doctor, <laughs> a sign of uh, someone who mostly played uh, five years ago. This uh, is Albert on the right. Uh, I think he's living in San Diego. And he came up. Uh, he's, he's Orange County. Um, Orange County. So he, that was close. Yeah. Exactly. So, but he would sometimes, I think, even go to the San Diego casual play night, even though that's like at least an hour drive for him. Uh, Albert's a super nice guy. Uh, plays on Jaina a lot. Is Jimmy Corgan? Mm -hmm. He said this was his first time touching cards in years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Like, like, obviously during COVID, everyone didn't touch cards for a couple of years, and you know, since he lives like at least an hour away from from San Diego or LA Meta, I'm not surprised. Yeah. All right, uh, Mindscaping coming out of Jammin, that new Jinteki operation. I was thinking that Jinteki was really hurting for uh, good econ in the new meta, but I really like that in TAI. TAI, it's got like damage or econ, and it's like a little bit of R&D defense as well. Yeah, I like how it's like almost two completely separate cards. <laughs> like, uh, if you're using, there are like NBN kill decks that don't really care about the draw and not part of it at all. And Albert's playing uh, Ken, um, but starting with a uh, sure gamble, not a dirty laundry like, like Ken should. That might be second click. Uh, he's on voice pad, so it makes sense that he wants all this event econ. And I think the twinning, I played one round against him, but I was already tilted from losses by that point. <laughs> oh, there's the dirty laundry. Okay, so that's about as good value as you can get. Uh, you get the Ken credit, you get the dirty laundry, or the um, voice pad credit, and then you're going to get five from dirty laundry. Yeah, that's perfect. I would say that's a, a pretty good start for Albert. Uh, he's got a, a very important permanent econ card and also a lot of credits. And the PE does not have much of a board state. Yeah, this may be a little bit of a tough matchup, I would think, for a criminal. Uh, they're very vulnerable to uh, damage, oh. knocking out important pieces. I see four agendas in Jammin's hand, and I maybe five this is a an incredibly bad draw oh that's fair <laughs> what's the one between house and uh the one two um so i think there's a blood in the water which is like mm -hmm. uh has the agenda advancement requirement of the runner's hand uh, there is one more spin doctor so that's the only <laughs> that's the only good news in his hand but that that's going to be tough to come back from even with the spin doctor I can't quite see the heat with the glare. Uh, my heart's telling me it's a fairy, and my mind knows that's incredible. <laughs> yes. Um... Oh, buy okay. events. That's yep. the new um, run event kind of replaces. Um, what's the one it replaced? It was the Dan Dargenio run events. Uh, exactly, yeah. It kind of is a new 
very versatile one influence run event. Um, I I really enjoy this card. Let's see what's on top. He's got Let's... another voice pad out. Yeah, so I think he installed the voice pad with the uh, ability on Baja Bands to install a card at one less credit. Yep. Probably, presumably the draw as well against PE. Yeah, yeah, that's very solid against PE, and just Trash. solid in general. Trash to Rashida out of R&D, it looks like. Definitely didn't need the four credits for that. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's it's very dangerous, I would say, to take the four credits against R and D, uh, unless you've already run it and saw that there was a high trash cost. Uh, uh, I was supposed to get a, a credit last night for all the um, Of all the corps that are maybe gonna pull out of getting a, an agenda flood like that, though, like at least he's getting some net damage out of it as PE. That was even true. more in R and D after the after the spam in hand. Yeah. Oh, no, no, he didn't. Sorry, it was Rashida, not Nick. Yeah. But it's true that, yeah, if you're playing against BE, you probably poke HQ once, you see an agenda, and then you stop poking, draw. So it gives the B player a little more time. But GM still has to draw ice, otherwise, Albert's just going to win by poking HQ once or twice a turn. Oh, snare. That's nice. Mm. Who needs ice when you have snare? <laughs> okay, well, the spin's a good way to get out of this agenda flood. And we're seeing some ice now. That's Fenutria, the uh, tag based. I'm probably getting the name of it. Oh, yes. Uh, it's when the runner has four or more cards, uh, and I think they pass the ice, they take a tag. And it also has two net damage subs. So I saw. Um, Dave playing this like tag based PE archetype up at Cascadia and is jamming on a similar thing here with Finutria and Snare and Mindscaping, like a backup plan for doing some Mindscaping kill. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, I think. Or end of the line. Yeah, that Mindscaping is a nice way to do a damage or two if they hit a Snare or, yeah, if you have any other tag punishment, which. Finutria would be. I think one of the goals of Null Signal was to like make it so that you could do sort of tag strategies a little bit out of every faction. Um, obviously, it's still more dominant in MB and Wayland, but like it's cool that HB and Detective can do a little bit. And yet, you still cut increasing the pawn for. <laughs> Another three one or whatever. Yeah, but I had in my Thule deck, uh, which Alex is alluding to, that we'll probably see later. Um, I did have Jagarandi, which is a, a HB uh, tagging card. Okay, so that's two, right? Yep. Ooh, Albert. I think that was a mistake for Albert to dirty laundry there. He doesn't really need the money, and he's now very low on cards. Is his hand empty? I think he's at zero, so... Oh. He's not tagged. He's not tagged, so he's probably okay. I don't know if there's any cards in the water is just a kill. Oh, you're right. You are right. Um, I... Does Gemma not know that? Maybe his hand's hiding somewhere else? I think Jammin hasn't played in a while. He may just not realize that he has the kill. <laughs> oh, Jammin. Uh, please tell me you see it, Jammin. He does I have do not... in the water in hand, right? I Yeah, unless it's... I unless see a house of knives. I see... Oh, I see a regenesis as well. But I thought I saw blood in the water. One of those is a hybrid release. <clears throat> Mm. But hybrid release would also kill, right? Isn't that a two-one? Unless yeah. he drew it on yeah. the mind no, right. It's, no, it's he, possible. He had, it, he had it already. Uh, I think he may have oh, just. He does it. have. I see two cards over in hand. Did he draw them already, or maybe his hand was just off camera? Oh. Albert's got a hand. Got it. Maybe he set his hand down outside the camera. Yeah. yeah. 
definitely always be on the lookout for that blood in the water kill though. Yeah, yeah. TV. Totally. Yeah, that's definitely blood in the water right there though. And even if they don't get the kill with it, I feel like when you go down to like one or two cards and just let them get two points for like, you know, not a lot, and they get to ping a card out of your hand, it's still really good. Yeah. I tried running it in my Isuak startup for a bit, mm -hmm. and I kept putting myself in a trap where mm -hmm. I, would, I would push it into the remote to try to score it, and then they draw up. Like I could, I could have put anything else in the remote. And it <laughs> so this is an example of like Jamin's actually fought back pretty well. Um, like he has ice on all his centrals. Um, he's, you know, now he doesn't mind having a couple of agendas in hand um, because you know he may be able to score some of them. So I think he's done a pretty good job here. Yeah, and with that scored house of knives that Albert didn't run on the first turn. Uh, it's a little scary yeah, to just run random things here. Totally. I think it's an example of, um, I think you don't want to be too scared of Agenda Flood. Obviously it can screw you, but like a lot of times if you just put out a, a naked agenda, people will think it's a spin doctor or something, uh, or they're worried about a snare, and then all of a sudden you score the House of Knives and that's going to help protect the rest of your agendas. And I'm surprised he didn't use the spin doctor on the table to, you know, overdraw himself out of that situation. Yeah, but it, it ended up working out okay, I think. At this point, we'll see. Unless unless there's like a legwork coming here, it may be okay that he's got several agendas in hand. What is this? Oh, that's a uh, alt art Amakua. I believe that's the Cat Shen alt art, mm. uh, Kisra online. Ah, oh, inside job R and D. That's much higher value when you've got two voice pads and can. So you're actually making money off the inside job. That's fair, but you're giving up your inside job. Not that you really need it. You are. Oh, but you know what? He's gonna see three cards, so it's a maker's eye as well. Because he's got. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's sick. Oh, okay. That's smart, actually. Against Jinteki, you often want to maybe see two cards, but you often don't want to see three because there's so much. Oh, see, this is an example. Uh, Albert just stole a Fuji, so he's going to take uh, one net damage for PE and then two for Fuji. Oof. Uh, oh, I think this is... That's Prana Condenser. They didn't ban that? No, no. I think it's a fair card. One card? Down to one card. I remembered it definitely causing some ruckus when it first came out. You got me? I'm surprised we haven't seen more of it. Oh, Albert just asked, do you got me? He's got one card in hand. So Blood in the Clock Tower, or not, <laughs> Blood in the Water, um, could definitely take that one card away. It's only if you don't steal. If he had two, then he could kill Albert. Or if there was a 2-1 already on the board. Oh, I'm not complaining. <laughs> oh, you know what? Jammin should have House of Knives on the inside job. Yeah, I mean, he didn't know he was going to hit at Fuji. That's true. That's still that is very true. Might have been good. Oh, we saw it. We we're seeing the blood in the water. Uh, take that last. So Jamin has one click left. And do we know he has another. Table? Yeah. Uh, so he did not have a second blood in the water, and he did not have uh, another agenda that he could score. Well, he's kind of giving up a little bit of his burst kill potential by getting rid of that blood in the water, but also that two points in hand is a liability to totally. Keep. So it, it makes sense just for tempo, for value to get that out of the way. Yeah, so it's now four points to three, uh, Albert in the lead. Um, but yeah, definitely still anyone's game. Oh, so this, 
No, that's not hyper. I think that's Regenesis, the one that. Uh, no, that's that's definitely hybrid. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. I uh, I scribbled that proxy. I know what those deformed <laughs> part human things look like. Got it. Okay. It's the two one that can install a face down. Yeah, out of, yeah. Out of archives. Um. Wait. If he had that, couldn't he have killed by? Or no, you need three. You, you would like also need a. Short. Yeah, you're right. Ooh, now got five House of Knives counters. That is really useful. Um, so as a reminder, you can only use one counter from each House of Knives on any given run. But if you have two scored, you can use two. You got four credits out? Yep. Uh, Albert's on five points, though, so sadly uh, we can't get, like, a Fuji plus the House of Knives situation any longer. True. Uh, the runner wins before taking the damage from Fuji, right? Yeah. Um, yep. Oh, Earthrise Hotel. Always, always nice to see against Shinteki. Shaman does not have a lot of econ going on. Yeah, that's... That's actually now his biggest problem, more than Agenda Flood. He actually has Ice Flood. The classic P turn is... <laughs> are those so, things coming through? Yes, I, I think they are. Did he put a snare behind that ice? I missed it. I hope so. I think he might have, which is just amazing um, really hope that gets inside jobs but it, it also it's the kind of thing that might have been too smart like yeah it's possible that just putting the snare out without an ice there's a good chance that albert res, uh, runs that yeah albert already played uh one inside job it's less likely to have one although he is ken yeah yeah, Ken famously allowed to have six inside jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe there's one Estabrado in here. Oh, Baja Bands. Uh, this is where, yeah, I think a naked snare would be quite good if, if Albert's just looking to use a Baja Bands. Definitely not what you want as the title of your memoir. Oh, yeah. How many cards do you have? I have one, two, three, four cards in hand. We got some intense reading going on here. Yeah. There's a lot of text on that card. It's a fun yeah. card, but not, not one I would put in like a learn to play deck. Okay, he's firing one of the house of. Ooh. Both, he fired both. Fired both. Okay, we hit got him a sentry job. breaker. I, I, I think, think that he was, was hoping, hoping to bleed him a little bit before he went for the other remote, but hitting the inside job. Maybe you know uh, he's not going to go for it at all. Yeah, that's. Um, and then uh, for second option. Okay, he drew for two. Let's run archive. Second option, I will place four. four and he's taking the four credits for the uh, uh, to trash. Trashing things. Yep. Doesn't want to install because he doesn't want to reduce cards at hand. I think. Yeah, yeah. I think he's still got plenty of hit points. Uh, remaining in his deck uh, for how many agenda points he's scored so far. There's another fairy. No, uh, but there's the last <laughs> Bahia Vans. Yeah. yeah, that was what it is. Um, and so Albert now at six points, I think. Yep. So yeah, he can just play it very slow now and uh, only run with a full hand of cards and probably be okay. But he smells the blood in the water. <laughs> no, you called it. It's the right move. I sometimes have prob uh, problems playing cautiously enough against uh, PE. Yeah. Uh, so Albert just played a Hermes. Uh, he is helpfully leaving his click trackers by the action he did. 
So, oh, and he is just oh, rebirthed into Leela. Leela. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, uh, Never gets old. So, it is tough, I think, once you're on game point as PE, often your kills involve, like, you, um, your opponent stole an agenda and lost a few cards, so it's definitely really tough when you're at game point. I do see Jammin has Jagarandi, the HB tag ice, um, that's threat four. Uh, and they have to either spend a click or take a tag. Um, so that is at least online with the number of points in, uh, in the board. But he's dedicated so much of his ice to his centrals now that he doesn't have like a scoring server going on. Uh, it, I don't know how he's going to go for the win. That That's a great point. Albert can play this so slowly. Uh, we also see... Um, Diversion of funds in Albert's hand. So if I were him, I would not run R and D basically while the Jinteki player has any money. I would just only diversion of funds and then run R and D. He's got uh, plenty of twin encounters on hand. Yep. Oh, bravado! Also, probably not not even necessarily needed, but I do love that card. Uh, oh, okay. Oh! Is that the snare? He's not I think it first. Yeah, this is... I would say this is a misplay. He may be okay, but... Uh, I would probably do before anything else. I see Diviner on the remote. Which is... Does a net damage and then may end the run? Is that right? Yes. It's based on the, uh, the cost of the card that got hit. Uh, four cards in hand, though. Let's see. Uh, Jamin wants to deal a total of five damage. That's the snare and the two House of Knives credit uh, markers. There go the House of Knives markers. Wow, if he gets this. Oh, wait, six? Six cards in hand? Oh, no. I heard four. Yeah, it looks like six. That's so sad. There it is. That would be so cool if Albert okay. did not start this run with seven cards. Yeah, and Albert's got two clicks remaining as well. <laughs> okay. Yep. Okay. Chairman missed the memo that uh, thousand cuts P is no longer the uh, strategy. Actually, no, six total. I don't track. Yeah, so that's yeah, that's smart. So not trashing the snare so that you get a turtle counter. Um, it also, by not trashing the snare, you know whether they're putting a new asset or agenda in that server they install in it. And it's the difference that's the difference, right? Yep, yep, yep. Well, I mean, even if you throw an upgrade in the remote, you can. Uh, oh, that's true. You, should, the, uh, you can choose to trash it. Also makes it so they can't spin Doctor back the snare. This one's new. This one's new. That's until, true. until they install. That's true. But really, the turtle counter, I think, is the biggest thing. I'm sad we're not getting to see this Prana can answer uh, thing happening. Or the uh, the mindscaping damage. Like yes. Jamin's, yeah. deck, Jamin's kind of been pushed to the wall the whole game from the agenda flood to the low econ. Yep. Oh, and there is a mindscaping. So you see how if Albert had run with like less cards and, and less clicks, he easily could have died here. Albert's reading the card, being like, okay, I don't want to flip tags. Uh, looks like Jammin drew the new agenda that makes uh, the runner bottom two cards to steal an agenda, I think. It's a new Genteki upgrade. Is it an additional cost, or is it after the steal? That's a great question. Um, I'm looking up the card now. 
Uh, it is Daniela Jorge Inacio. As an additional cost to trash this upgrade, the runner must add two cards from the grip at random to the bottom of the stack. As an additional cost to steal an agenda from this server, the runner must add two cards from the grip at random to the bottom of the stack. So both additional costs. Too bad on six points we're not going to see another uh, PE damage coming out of a steal. <laughs> yeah. A class act. With, uh, with Prana and with uh, Daniela, it feels like Jamin's deck wants to make a remote. And he's got more ice than I usually see in a PE. I played some practice games with Jamin the night before, and he was on a different deck, and he was like, I don't like this. I'm going to make a Jinteki deck. So I think he might have made this deck at like midnight the night before the tournament. I mean, what other way to curry favor with the gods? <laughs> True. When, when he wins this tournament, uh, spoiler for the, the finals, uh, it's going to be just that much more impressive. Four twenty counters. Yeah, he, uh, we're still seeing these bravados coming out from him. I guess he spent his credits on something. There's the diviner res. Yeah, oh, he spent them on class act, which is cost four. Oh, that's fair. Uh, put your good stuff on the bottom, draw your hit points. <laughs> but he's still running with not very many cards in here. Oh, another diversion of funds go down. Yeah, I, I would have liked to see those used, because Dinteki is a lot less scary when they have no money. Oh, I see an anemone in Janet's hand. That's a great ice, does two damage on res. Yeah. So make that money. Mm -hmm. uh, no <laughs> okay, that was just a value run. Jammin didn't overinstall or anything, right? It's still the snare in the remote. Okay, that's. <laughs> yes, I think so. That's pretty funny. You got four dollars. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I would spend a card just for money against PE when I already have good money. Yeah. Oh, but you know what? It also you know why he did it is it's also a twenty counter. That's why he did it because he spent from prepaid voice pad to twenty. Okay. Yep. And he's getting so much value from Ken as well. Yep. So next turn, Albert's gonna have all the twenty counters and all the cards, and that's probably gonna be the last turn of the game. Sorry, man. I think that was a seven credit robotic <laughs> single ice server. Yeah. Nice. Okay, I take it back. That was a great move. Mine's kidding. Yeah, towards the end there. I guess he just needs that uh, slight econ. Well, that and his only out is that Albert like runs R and D. Uh, takes a tag from Jagarandi, but doesn't win the game. Like, you could see a scenario where Albert's like, well, I'm probably going to win, so, like, I'm going to take this tag instead of spending a click, and then... That's fair. Then he gets you know, an early it's, impede. It's not a great line, but it's like, you have to take, like, even a slight line at this point if you're jamming. Yeah. How many points is jamming on? Four still? Uh, yes. Uh, so, and he doesn't have much of a scoring amount, so... Yeah. It would be quite hard to score out. Ooh, blood in the water. The problem wasn't not knowing the deck. Okay, that's fine. Kind of hurts right. that he uh, spent one of his last uh, house counter from the other one on just some value damage. He doesn't have it available to try to spike, like when a snare might be accessed or something. Yeah, it's nice if you have one on both of them. Search my heap for five cards. Oh wow! Albert is playing. I think Levy AR Lab. The uh, the or not or Harmony. What? Yeah, Harmony. The replacement for Levy that shuffles five cards back. That's not a card you see very often. No. Uh, makes sense though. Out of criminal in an environment where you're worried about damage. It's definitely good in this matchup. I think also Ken has a two extra influence, so like sometimes he'll play cards that you wouldn't normally see in like a Sable or 419. 
And, you know, it's nice in this matchup. You don't want to have to worry about running out of R&D. And got a fifth 20 counter, too, from playing this. That's got to be some of the strongest uh, card return uh, that's printed for Runner right now. They've been, uh, Null Signal's been very... Uh, strict about making a lot of the recursion uh, uh, card return effects uh, not add a whole lot more cards back to your deck. Yeah, I mean, it's it's more cards than labor rights, but I think Anarchs would almost always rather play labor rights because it's no influence, it's also free, and they kind of don't mind the fact that it trashes things. That's true. Labor Rights is only card positive if you have managed to keep it in your hands to where your deck has run out. Though. Yeah, but it's not that hard for an Anarch to trash their whole deck. Uh, oh, I th is this a Raindrops? What is this run event? It has something on it. Oh, this is, remember at the very beginning of the game, we saw this, the uh, the card that if they have four cards or more, they take a tag. Uh, and it does, has two net damage subs. Okay, so it, it fires. Oh yeah, this is a raindrops. Oh, the black and white proxies make it uh, not pop as, as well. Yeah. And yeah, I, don't think we're, I don't think we're going to see the, uh, the tag, though, because he's down to three now after the subs. Uh, oh, yeah. He didn't fire... Oh, he doesn't have enough credits to activate a snare anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it makes sense to res the ice, though, in a world where he might get doofed at any moment. And R&D is probably where he's going to lose. He does want to get something up on it. Yeah, yeah. It's unfortunate that it was against the raindrops. So. Oh, yeah, Albert has already spent 20 counters. Jammin's trying to do a House of Knives, but uh, there's no window to spend a House of Knives after uh, a 20 counter. Um, and Jammin, or Albert may not have... Uh, wanted to spend that many twin encounters if he had one less card in hand, so yeah. um, it, it is relevant. Declares access. Do I still have a window to use House of Nine? Yeah. So um, I use these two whenever I breach, so is that too late? Did you do that first and then I did? Okay, so you ran, I ran, I got through, I put three, and I'm, I'm here. It was so a successful eight. run. It was a successful run. I think once it's a successful run, then there's another window. Window. But I had already paid my 220, which meant I, I so the, I'm already past the success. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a window to House of Knives after encountering the last ice, but not after it becomes a successful run. That sounds right. I should have done it before you declare that. This order is fine. I think he's doing one round for federal. It's probably too late then, because you already used those tokens. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, yeah, that's fine. All right, thank you. All right, so it looks like they they got to the right place. So, we're arguing some things. Or karma some things. So, three cards. So, first card. I'll trash that. Right, a trash bowl, that's always that. Oh, Rashida. Mm -hmm. Mindscaping, I think. And ice. Okay. I get to draw two cards. I love Jammin's mix of a hand drawn Rashida and a black one printed Rashida. <laughs> yep, that's pretty great. Oh, this is doing a class act. And even after that harmony, that, uh, that stack's getting thin. Yep. So with one credit, there's any reason for Albert not to poke HQ here with the second to last click? Is the rest cost on Diviner one or two? I think it's two. 
Okay, play a Carmen. That's also pretty solid. That turtle has been on the board for quite a while, and it's got only one must. counter on it. Oh no! Yeah, no, most yeah, Mavris has been hit or anything. No Mavris. It's just most of the time that Albert runs, he either trashes something or steals an agenda. Yeah. Okay. Final click HQ is probably okay when Jamming can't afford a snare. Oh, some two cards. So I think there's a Blood in the Water in hand. Was that a buy side? Yeah. Okay, and now I'm gonna, oh, it's good to know it's there. Albert's got a D5 with him, a D3, D4. <laughs> Uh, Tattoo Bola. HQ is pretty iced. I think that's me. Yep, that's me. It's side where it doesn't count. Oh wow, Oppo Research. Oppo? Yeah. So this really is a very taggy PE. Oh, I was supposed to bounce something. Do you think there's an end of the line in there somewhere? Oh, when I scored. It's okay. Yeah. Wait, did I score? Uh, no, I didn't score. It, I didn't score. Well, the mindscaping uh, certainly can go up to three damage for three tags. There, there might yeah. be one into the line. Uh, Have we seen much influence besides the uh, the oppo? Uh, Jagarandi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jagarandi is two influence. I know. <laughs> So three spins, at least one Jagarandi. Oppo is three? Strong question mark? Yep, that is a good question. Uh, Oppo is, yeah, that's low influence for a strong card, but not, not quite as strong as hard hitting is. Are we halfway? Yeah, you have 27 minutes left. Okay, thank you. Oh, this is the uh, new criminal code gate breaker. It's not very good once you are at threat three. Yeah. But Albert has enough money. He's decided he just wants to have all the breakers. Is that curve your out as well? Exactly. Well, when you're getting a seven credit bravado. Yeah. The dough. So I think Albert's just waiting for Jammin to draw those cards on R and D that he's already seen. Yep, so this is a uh, six credit uh, sure gamble with the two voice pads. Um, I saw him reach for the can. <laughs> but he did. Okay. Uh, Two cards in the hand. Oh, wow. Okay, so we're yeah. going to see a damage and a Hermes trigger. Oh, yeah, Hermes. That, that's significant. Yeah, Albert's throwing down all those breakers. Uh, kind of let this one slip through. Yeah, I think... I understand that he wanted to probably play the sure gamble to use voice pad every turn and 20 every turn. I think he probably could have waited to like install one of those breakers. If Jammin can uh, draw up another, uh, what's it called, a hybrid release, that's game. That's true. Did, uh, did they forget the Hermes? I think so. 
Well, you know, a lot of people, their first time playing in person in a very long time. JNet remembers all this stuff for you. Yeah. After my game with Albert, he was like, have you been playing in person a lot? You're catching all your triggers. <laughs> uh, okay, so a inside job on R&D. This, this could definitely be game. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's what happened last time. Yeah. How many cards? Three, three in hand. Yeah, let's pick one. All right. So Jammin uses the final. Yeah. And yeah, let's look at the cards. The cutlery right. block is empty. Uh, Osakai. I didn't see it. Second card. Keep it. Third card. Two cards in hand, it looks like. Snare. Oh. Why does he have to reveal the snare? Oh, uh, Runner always has to reveal snare to the corp, even if the corp can't afford it. Oh, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting that Albert didn't uh, crash the snare just to kind of get more cards out of R&D, but... Yeah, he's got all his breakers out, but now that they're all out, he's finally trying to power up that Amaqua. Crazy attention to it. True. I'll take one, I'll trash the I could also understand that Jammin's so poor, maybe you're thinking, I'll let him draw a snare, and then he's even farther away from drawing into Econ. Yeah, that's fair. We saw the mindscapings get uh, spun back in. Yeah. All right, one card left in the deck. Even after the Harmony Era, lot, that's that's amazing. Yeah, I repent for what I said about Thousand Cuts being dead. <laughs> My kingdom for an avocado, though. Yeah. I'm not not sad that that card is gone. <laughs> but Fuji is pretty nasty too. Like, one thing with avocado is at least you could choose not to steal it. You cannot do that with Fuji. Definitely a lot less toxic in PE uh, to have Fuji, though. It's the oboe just being that additional cost. The Fuji, you can, once you're at, at threat four, you're, uh, you can steal it safely. True. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, third click. Let's run HQ. Okay, running HQ even though the snare is there. That's... And there enough. Is that two cards in hand? Three now. He's got no. Three hands. Yeah, but there's definitely enough money for to pay for the snare. Five cards. Uh, there's five cards in hand. Oh yes, three on Albert's side. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Is there a blood in the water? Uh oh. <laughs> now I'll trash it. Uh, that's yeah. I think I would not have run HQ there, knowing that there's a snare. Okay, there's the classic PE triple click for credit turn. All right, where does Albert look now? Does he try to camp R and D? I think oh. you camp R and D. You just try yeah. to top deck it. There it goes. Jack R and D. Okay. Uh, power three. So uh, Albert now has to spend a click or a uh, or end the run to not get a tag. Uh, wait, Albert just broke it. I don't think he actually did the. What is, the, effect. what is the threat on Jaguar and do? It's threat four. Uh, it's you either have to spend a click or take a tag. Yeah, 
spend the sword, right? Unless maybe he spent the clicks. I don't know. Wait, oh no, he did not, because you just said I have two clicks left. He should have one click left. Doesn't radically. What was his, oh, his, his other click was a draw? Yeah, he drew first, because he had no cards in hand. Yeah. We know you know it, so it's fine. Click one, I'll enter the depths. You're remote. Okay, so this is the click Galbert should not actually have. Great. <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't win on this one. I don't think there's any agendas in hand, so. Yep. Popo. So he tra did he trash another Prana Condenser off of R&D on that round? Uh, I don't think, oh, maybe he did. But Jammin is so poor that he would only be able to give two tags and Albert would be able to clear those, so. It's not like amazing. Uh, yeah, they're just talking about the fact that they forgot. Shagarandi. Yeah, that's the way. You didn't draw, right? You just money up. Mandatory. And then three money up. So I know what that is. Um, um, oh, uh, I thought he was going to sacrifice well. quick quick this turn. <laughs> yeah. Be polite, but it doesn't look like it's happening. But yeah, d luckily it didn't matter. There was nothing really in HQ. Yeah, credit, credit, hedge. Oh, a hedge fund. Wow. This is like three times richer than Jem has been this entire game. <laughs> Card? One card. That's the game. Ooh. Oh. You don't, you don't have stung. And Sting only does its text after the steal, right? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, oh, that was good. On those, uh, uh, when stolen, when scored or stolen effects happen after the score of the steal. So that was definitely longer than uh, the half of the 65 minute round. I think both players are getting used to playing in person again. Um, they're going to have to rush through the second round, or second game of the round. Yeah, looks like they're about 45 minutes in. Um, I had a, a number of games in the day that we really had to rush through the second game. Yeah. And Jamin was just uh, crawling back for uh, yeah. half an hour there. Yep, I think if he had, if he had seen uh, Hedge Fund earlier, <laughs> might have won that game. So this is uh, Reyna versus um, Outfit, I think? Yep. Uh, Albert's on the big deal deck that you warned me so much about that I didn't ever see at Cascadia, but now I've finally lost to it. Ah, nice. I I played against Albert on this on JNet a few times, actually. Uh, his last time I played him, it was like pretty similar to the version from Intercontinentals um, that some people were on. They had big deal, but also had tree line, which is the ice that you can discard for three advancements on another ice. So they would use tree line to boost a Pharos, or just use tree line to boost another tree line. It becomes like six or seven strength once it's uh, boosted by three advancements. Yeah, seven strength. It's mean against uh, such a cleaver dominated runner meta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was tinkering with another Isuak today that uh, I put multiple tree lines in uh, to use as a both cleaver opposition and uh, trick of light fodder. Nice. Oh, 15 minute warning. I do want to take a moment to uh, admire the, the Wookiee Christ. Play map. <laughs> Didn't really oh, see it under the whole uh, play area last round. Uh, it's pretty great. Uh, 
deck. So the nice thing is Outfit is a deck that uh, can potentially win in 15 minutes. Um, it certainly can get a point advantage in 15 minutes. Uh, hopefully it won't come down to that. Yeah, this is going to be a tough fight for Jamin. Yeah, I feel like it's more control. I mean, you maybe, if you get a lucky central access, could could get a few points early. It was really rough for me going up against the outfit on Freedom. It was all my, I was on Audrey and my uh, whole breaking suite is virus-based and I couldn't benefit from any of that sweet, sweet bad though. <laughs> Yeah, that is, it's interesting. Um, I feel like Faust had that problem as well. I mean, not that anyone feels too much sympathy for Faust, but uh, when you have alternative ways of breaking, uh, Bad Pup is less useful. What's the ice on HQ? Uh, I think it's Enigma. That's my guess, at least. It is a lot of glare. Maybe a... Horda? He looks like he's at, or a tree line. He looks like he's he res to four cost dice because he's at one. Oh, Reyna. Reyna. Yeah. Yeah, Jamex really... was two runs, one lost click for Enigma and Fermenter. Yeah. That's not bad. The turn one Fermenter. Sprint. Interesting. I I don't see this too often in outfit. Um, because they you, they don't generally need to shuffle agendas back in. They they often like having them. But I guess you could also use sprint to, to draw four agendas. When there's a specific combo piece or big econ card that you need. True. Yeah, there's a lot of pieces to this outfit deck. It can work really well, but it can also just totally flounder when it doesn't get, you know, the right to big to fail into government subsidy into big deal order of you don't want to draw those in the wrong order. I click 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 I think Jammin I think Jammin stole the agenda that you can discard to fast advance something else. Uh, slash and burn. Oh wow, and then he just trashed like three cards. So yeah, I see uh, a Mavericks on top. Yeah, I think it was like a, an NGO maybe, and a Spin Doctor maybe, I'm not 100% sure. Was that just like three R&D runs? Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, and his Fermenter's back to square negative one after that Mavericks. True. But I think this is the right approach, just like try to get some early points on centrals. That way, you know, maybe you win, but at the very least, outfit can't get an easy time win. Yep. So there's the uh, hostel. All right. So outfit does go up to 10, so R&D is probably protected. That's my turn. Surveyor? Uh, so that is not a very good ice on its own, but Jammin is so broke that it should be enough. Reyna's got a length, though. Oh, interesting. Uh, so if Albert doesn't boost them, it's one. And there's a bad pub. So there's a bad pub just to beat the first trace. Yeah. Uh, I guess you could spend one to get through the second one for one access. Actually, no. Let's stop it. Let's stop it for one. All right. Yeah, that's that's probably smart. Oh, Jam is. Oh, but so that that's interesting. So Jamin declared a run on archives. Realized there was a Mavirus and thought about taking that back, but because 
Albert had already said, I want to pop spin, uh, that you couldn't really go back because that, yeah. that gives away that there's an agenda in archives. Well, at least Fermenter was only on one counter. True. Uh, was that a, just an overdraw uh, face down in archives? Uh, probably. I wonder if Albert mulled, because he's acting like he was flooded. Maybe. Alright, so that Surventor, Surveyor is now four strength, four trace. Much, much more substantial. Okay. What do you think Jammin's plan is when he's on Reyna? You don't see Reyna too often in standard. Yeah, so he's got a Tread Lightly in hand, which increases the res costs of ice by an additional two. Um, Not too helpful in this matchup. Yeah, it's tough. I wonder if you were going to go for that strategy, you know, you maybe shouldn't have run on R&D and let him res the Surveyor. Um, but honestly, Outfit is going to have enough money to res Ice. Oh, but I do see a Hippo in hand. So if he can get some Breakers, that could be quite good. Yeah, right now Jammin could strategically benefit from like prying HQ or RNG. Oh, so we just see a, the price mill a. Uh, oh, two different events that you want to trash. Um, so a strike oh, nice. fund and a steel skin. That's awesome. uh, Stargate would be great if you had a way to get into RD. So I think or he's going to... Or Liberated account is... That's what we complain about. <laughs> yeah, that was not a True. bad hit. Um, only thing is, money's not really his problem right now. Yeah, since uh, this outfit deck doesn't really build a remote, uh, HQ and R&D seem kind of equally uh, vulnerable. Uh, Normally, when there's a scoring server, like HQ might not be nearly as beneficial if the uh, orc can just push them straight through from deck yeah. immediately into their scoring server. Uh, for some reason, maybe because they're rushed, DM and put six counters on that liberated. Uh, should be four counters. Uh, it is because it's 16 credits, you take four each time. Yeah. Maybe there's some stacked and he put the full amount on it. Just do it. Play the game. Click one. Don't think so. Ooh, I remember that card. Oh, that's what I forgot to bring. My cards. For, you know, I have like a whole binder of like totals. Yeah, so I was going to bring in. You know, so Albert does need to score some more points here. He is currently. Oh, wait. I guess they're tied right now. But of course, you don't want to yeah, end with the tie. <laughs> You've got uh, about another seven minutes, I think. Not totally sure. Okay, that should be enough for some more scores. Hopefully, on both sides. Oh, Jamin has Moshing. That hopefully will find him a breaker. He's drawing instead. Yeah. Oh, I don't. I he doesn't have like a good way to get those mosh triggers. Yeah, I I don't like that turn. I would have much rather moshed and just gone aggressively for breakers. Sprint. Yeah, I'm having a really hard time following. This. Sorry. It's just... Uh, it's always tough. It's always tough to know how to play with when you were so rushed. You know, you don't want to like play so fast or make a lot of mistakes. But you know, you also do like in this case. I feel like Ma Fermenter might make sense if you had 20 more minutes. But like, 
I don't like it when you've got seven minutes. Is the big token uh, in Albert's credit pool a five or a ten? Uh, a five? I think it's a five. He's got. Some, he's not really using them, but in his box, he also has the purple threes. I remember they had like ones, threes, and fives. Big deals. 16 to play, right? 17. 17. 17. Okay, he's close. Well, there's the 17. Okay. So you actually want 18, because you want to ideally install advance once, and then big deal in an atlas with two counters. Either way, if Jamin doesn't make some progress here, we might see the big deal. Totally. In two sprints, uh, we haven't seen a lot of HQ access. Okay, so here's. A good look at Albertson, though. Oh, here's the moshing. Oh, and the moshing is going to hit a steel skin. So that's a draw five. What was that middle party trash? Uh, on Passant, uh, that's oh. it, when you make a successful run, uh, you can trash an unrezzed ice protecting that server. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I, I think that makes a lot of sense in Reyna, where people are going to sometimes be unable to afford to, to resonize. Yep. I had a few of them in my startup Reyna at Cascadia, but I haven't even seen the new art from, it, from that reprint. Uh, no, that's... Ampassant is the same art. There's no new art. Really? Four cards. Uh, okay, so we got the first breaker for Jammin, a Carmen, so that will help with breaking Surveyor. Break Surveyor currently for four credits, uh, but, you know, two of that will be bad pub, so only two real credits. And some of the common outfit, other ice is like Trebuchet, which is also a century. Yep. Um, Bulwark rotated, I think. It I did, yeah. Lately. <laughs> so here's a tip. If you ever play the outfit, if you have no programs installed and you run, they can't really hurt you because their only really nasty face check is a trebuchet. Um, but if you just run with no programs installed, you're relatively safe. Or can trebuchet kill non-programs? I need to double check that now. Um, sorry, Trebuchet can kill any card. But if you run with no cards, period, you are relatively safe yeah, against the outfit. I was just one draw. Also, like, I can't believe I fucking pulled that off. Oh, I can't. Cost is straight now. Cost is straight one way. Oh, yeah. Jammin now has a cleaver. So he can break but not get into HQ because that's protected by an enemy. That's amazing. Also, this was a rhetorical entire game. Entire game. Uh, I never it's funny because you kept running yeah. HQ. I had that below in there since like turn four. I'm surprised he hasn't started pressuring R&D since he got the karma on the table. True. Yeah. I only ever had when you were like really running it. I only ever had one. Really? Hopefully we'll see an R&D run here. But it was a blow. Smart move. With the lady liberty, though, so they yeah. really want to see like a finality. Yeah. That's yeah. with the limited time remaining. And then you crash it for it. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Is that not an enigma? Have I, have I had it wrong the whole time? I think I need to play a on this one. And then once I get the Bologna. Oh, this is Valentau, the code gate that a lot of outfit players like. It gives a bad pub. Uh, then the corp gains two, the runner loses two, and if the corp has more money than the runner, it ends the run. Uh, I found in the late game, because it's just costing bad pub to the runner, it generally doesn't end the run, and is just kind of like a fancy pop-up window that gives the corp two credits. Uh, but in the early game, it, it generally does end the run. He's on three bad pub. We haven't really seen... Oh, he, I mean, he's probably saving his too big to fail until after his big deal. Uh, yeah, he may have too much money now. Oh, time. 
Uh, I think Jammin has two more clicks, so uh, maybe he'll try to get into R and D after this. Uh, yeah, I was like rushing that Malona maybe. Oh, okay, but you were running and so much, I was like. Okay, so Valentine does end the run. Alright, so the tread lightly is played in R&D to make the outer R&D ice more expensive to rest. It's on 13 credits, so I think he can probably still rest. Interesting. Oh, Albert, Albert wants to maybe try to big deal next turn? Maybe he's saving it for that? Does he have enough? Is that 16 credits? Uh, I think he's got 18 right now. He's got one of the purples, not one of the reds. Oh, he does get a Maw off the R&D access. They just remembered that. And then archives. Oh, don't Looks like an ice. That's so funny. I'm already that includes Get another. Oh, so this is another Valentau. Um, that. And I could never use it. He's going to end the run. Yeah. But it does. It only costs output two real credits because they get three credits back for the bad pub. Uh, but it gets the fire too, so it's totally even, right? Oh, yeah. You're right. Yep. That's cool. And now with four bad pub, Albert could also win by just fast advancing a uh, uh, the agenda. Who wins? Albert's explaining that he gets another turn. Also, I think no. Government subsidy. Oh, that's that's not what you want to see. Oh, I see. Now it's a big deal. Okay, so Albert wins by big dealing. Goes up to, goes up to uh, four points to two. Oh, what? <laughs> I don't think Jamin's ever seen a big deal before. Okay, whatever. I didn't realize that's what it does. Okay. I would definitely have feelings about seeing a big deal for the first time. I mean, it's amazing that they made a 17 cost card that's, you know, actually playable. Yeah, I love it. It's nice when cards do something, you know? In this era of, like, fairness. <laughs> yeah. That's why I like turning the card. That was awesome. That first game was really tense, even though it was really uphill for Jammin. Yep. And this one, they didn't have a whole lot of time. They kind of hurt him in not finding that decoder. Uh, but the tension was still there. Totally. All right. Well, we'll be back with the second round. I was laughing because I was like, you must think I have to.